In this learning statement, let's move into the meat of this chapter, which is to do with margin accounting. So to build the rationale first for why margin accounting is required in the first place, let's assume that there is a futures trade which is done between two parties A and B. A is the long party here and B is the short party. Let's assume that this trade was done at a futures price F0T and to build the case as to why margin accounting is required, let's actually take a step back. Now here what I'm doing is for a moment I'm assuming that it's not a futures trade but rather a forward trade. Now if it's a forward trade, let's try and write down the payoff of these two parties A and B. Recall the payoffs from the previous chapter. For the long party, the payoff is simply the final spot price of the underlying that minus the pre-agreed forward price and the payoff of the short party is the pre-agreed forward price minus the spot price on the delivery date. Now if you were to take a look at these payoffs, you will see that the party A, I mean the long party, it stands to gain if the final spot price has let's say grown or evolved to a price which is higher than the pre-agreed forward price because only then will this payoff be, be positive and that's the case where A gains. On the other hand, B which is the short party, it gains when the final spot price has gone below, it has decreased, it's gone below the pre-agreed forward price. Okay. Now take a look at these two scenarios together. First of all, there is no overlap in these two scenarios, which means there is no spot price out there which at which you can say, let's say both A and B, they simultaneously gain. Okay, that this means that if A gains, B loses and vice versa. That's one aspect. The second aspect is that if you were to, you know, aggregate the two payoffs together, sum them up, you get a zero, which again reinforces the zero sum game kind of a logic that we had built in the previous chapter. Now, what exactly has happened? This is a trade which began as a fair trade. What does a fair trade mean? That when we began this trade, we worked out an F0T such that this trade was actually fair to both parties A and B. Okay, It began as a fair trade and finally when you reached this time T, the trade has turned out to be profitable to only one of A or B. It can't be profitable for both of them. Okay. So and, and, and this, you know, whether it turns out to be profitable for A or B, it depends on the evolution of this spot price. If it goes below F0T, then it's profitable for B. If it goes above F0T, it's profitable for A. Okay. Now, if at the end of this trade it becomes profitable for only one of the two parties, it means either of A or B will be in an unfavorable position and a party with an unfavorable position might not be in a position to honor its obligation. It might just run away. Okay. And therefore we say the other party which is in a favorable position has what is known as an exposure to the party in the unfavorable position. That's what we call exposure. Exposure means it's like a loss which my one of the two parties stands to make if the other party runs away. And typically the party which will run away is a party which is you know, right now making a loss. Only that party will run away. Okay. So this is the case for a forward. Now we need to therefore move to a system of realizing gains or losses in which these gains or losses just don't keep building up till the end of the trade and get realized at that point in time. We need a system such that gains and losses instead they trickle into or out of my accounts on a daily basis because if this system were somehow to be made to work then even if one of the parties were in a position to not honor its obligations at the delivery date for example all the gains or losses would already have been realized by that date. We would not have unrealized gains or losses on that day. Okay. And that's the rationale which margin accounting seeks to sort of you know, realize. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the aim of margin accounting. Okay. 
How does this happen? I'm looking for a system in which I'll realize my gains and losses via, let's say, daily movements in cash or liquid collateral from, let's say, my account to my counterparty's account or vice versa, depending on who gains and who loses. Okay, this is the rationale. Now let's move on and see how we can make it work. Before we take a look at how to actually make it work, let's introduce ourselves to three terms which come up in margin accounting. The first of them is what we call initial margin. Initial margin, think of it to be the initial amount which you deposit in what is called a margin account. So there were two parties involved here, party A and party B. Both of these parties would be required to open up an account with the exchange, let's call it a margin account, and deposit a certain amount into this account, which is known as the initial margin. So we are saying it's deposited at inception, that's why it's called initial margin. How much is to be deposited is decided by the exchange. And the the mechanics as to how this amount is decided, it's based on the variability of the underlying price. Why is that so? Remember, it was the ST whose evolution decided whether A or B made a gain or a loss. Therefore, if this ST is very volatile, that means it changes a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, then you would, intuitively speaking, require a larger amount of buffer in your margin account to take care of these variations in daily gains or losses. So as a rule of thumb, higher is the variability of this underlying driver, which is ST, higher would be the initial margin, which is asked to be deposited. Let's take a look at the second margin type, and that's what we call maintenance margin. Think of maintenance margin to be the minimum balance that has to be always maintained in your margin account. Typically speaking, maintenance margin is set to be 75% of the initial margin. That's maintenance. Next, the third kind is what we call variation margin. Variation margin, think of it to be the top-up amount that is required to be, let's say, posted by you if you get what is called a margin call. It will become clear in a few seconds. And this top-up amount is meant to bring the balance in your account, your margin account, back to the initial margin. Okay, So the variation margin, it's, it's an amount which you have to pay. The trigger event is when the balance in your account falls below maintenance and the variation margin, the size of this amount is to bring it back to initial margin. Okay, Now let's try and take a look at this concept a little bit visually. Let's assume that if you were to, let's say, you know, draw out your margin account as like a container. So at the beginning of this trade, that means at time t equal to zero, I'm saying let's fill up this container up to the level of initial margin. Maintenance margin is shown as this dashed line. It means that's the minimum level which you need to always maintain. And we are saying it's 75% of the initial margin. Let's say you are A and you've, you know, on a daily basis, let's say you were told that you've just incurred a loss. The trade moved against you. As I told you, there'll be a certain amount which will be deducted from your account and it will be transferred to the winning party's account, which will be, let's say, the B, party B. So let's say a loss happened and because of that, your margin account balance has gone down, but it's still above maintenance margin. Nothing happens. Your account stays as it is. You are not required to post anything into this account. Let's say next day another loss happens and your account now, account balance, I mean, now dips below maintenance margin. Now there is this event which we call a margin call. What the exchange now does is that it calls you up and says, hey, your balance has fallen below maintenance margin. Please top it up and bring it back to initial margin. And this, you know, this amount which is the, the top up amount is what we call vari variation margin. So after this margin call has been entertained and a variation margin has been deposited, your balance comes back up to initial margin. That's how these three margin terms work. Okay. Now, 
we've done this concept of the settlement price what we are saying here is that for the trade that we talked about the trade which gets initiated at time zero and let's say is delivered at time t let's assume that we will have at our disposal the settlement prices for each of the days between the inception day and the finally the delivery date or even let's say the close out date if this trade was closed out prior to delivery so from the starting of the trade till the end of the trade i am assuming that at the end of each day i'll be given the settlement futures price for that day for that particular expiry or delivery okay i've already told you what this settlement price is it's like an average of all futures trades that happen during a designated time window towards the end of the trading day what i'm assuming here is that the trade has been initiated on this day day zero i've just indexed these days with some number zero one two three and so on so the trade happens at point in time when the quoted futures price was f0t this denotes the beginning of trading this denotes the end of trading it's like a timeline okay so towards the beginning of the trading towards the morning hours let's say uh, this trade was done at that point in time the price was f0t and now in the next few pages what we'll do is we'll try and work out a mechanism in which we can trickle daily gains or losses into the two parties accounts depending on who gains and who losses who loses okay so let's do that let's now focus on the first day so this is day zero let's focus on this day i started my trade at this futures price and i have now closed trading on the day zero and the day zero settlement price was this right now what do i do and what do i need actually i need a way to settle the gains or losses between parties A and B. Now, since the futures price is no longer the price at which the trade happened, the price has moved away. It has moved up or down, I don't know. I have just sort of denoted it by a very generic variable, FS0T. All I am saying is, based on these two prices, I need to work out the gains and losses, and then I need to start my next day with a certain position that is again fair to both counterparties it began as a fair trade at the point it began it was a fair trade now the prices have changed i need to calculate how much each of the parties has gained or lost and then i need to start my next day again on a fair footing or i can say again as a fair position let's try and do that okay Let's take the perspective of party A. Remember, party A was one with the long position. The first change which I want to introduce right now is that I want to move away from a quantity that is delivered or exchanged, which is one unit, to a quantity which depends on the number of contracts that have been traded and the contract size of each contract. So let's say the trade happened for n contracts and the contract size is capital NC. That means the total quantity which now exchanges hands is N times NC, and any payoff which I write needs to be scaled by the number of units that needs to be exchanged between A and B. Now remember the payoff? If it was a forward, remember A would have made a final payoff of ST minus F0T, okay? Now, Go back to the first learning statement or the beginning of this chapter. Remember, we talked about basis. We talked about convergence between spot prices and futures prices. So by the time I reach the delivery date, this final spot price I know would be equal to FTT, which is like a futures price for immediate delivery. And if I were to write down the payoff of my counterparty A, it will be the total quantity that exchanges hands. Now it's important to note this times a final price minus an initial or original price. The, the reason I am highlighting this to you here is because this will act like a memory aid for all the relations that follow after this point. Okay, For the long party, always write it as final minus initial. Okay, Now, let's do this. Let's hypothetically do something which is very important for you to understand what just happened. Let's do this. 
I know what A's position is. This position was entered into at this point in time. Let's say by the time I close trading on the first day of this trade, what, what is my aim? My aim is to work out the gain or loss for that day. Let's do this. Let's give to A a package of two trades. Collectively speaking, I mean on an aggregate basis, the package has zero value, number one. Second thing, individual trades in the package also have approximately zero value. What is the package? The package is like this. I give A, which has a long original position, a package containing two trades. The first trade in the package consists of N contracts with a short position, a short futures position, with the same delivery date T as the original long position. Remember, it was also for a delivery date T but with a futures price equal to the final settlement price on that day. That's the change, okay? And commensurately or, or along with this trade, in this package, let's also include a long trade. Again, N contracts with FS0T as the settlement price or as the futures price, I should say, okay? Now, I told you, the two trades combine together to give you a package of zero value. Why is that so? Because one trade in this is a short, another trade is a long. Both these trades have the same futures price. If you were to take them together, they are collectively have a zero value. Okay. Now, individually, I told you each of these two trades also has a zero value. Why is that so? Because the futures price in these trades is the settlement price on that day. So I'm standing at the end of this day. At the end of this day, the futures price is, let's say, the price which is for the last trade on that day. Remember, we said we will not use the last traded price as the price for margin accounting because it's open to manipulation. Instead, we use the settlement price, which is like the average over, a, let's say, 30 minute trading window towards the end of the day. Now, I would assume here that the average during the last 30 minutes would not be too different from the fair price or let's say the last traded price on that day. And since that is the case, this trade, these two trades, I mean, individually also have a zero value. They are still fair trades. The trade which A entered into is no longer a fair trade. Why? Because the futures prices have now drifted away from the price at which this trade was done. These two trades are still fair because the drift or the difference between the settlement price and the fair or the last traded price is not that much. Okay, so that's let's 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 do that. Let's give A the package of these two trades and let's see what happens. Let's now match up the original trade of A, which was a long position, with the first trade of this package, which is a short position. The difference between these two trades is that the long position is at F0T as the futures price and the short position is at FS0T. They are different futures prices. They are not the same and hence the two trades do not net off to a zero value the way these two trades did. Okay, because these two had the same futures price. So what is then the collective gain or loss of the matching up of A's original position and the first trade of this package? The gain or loss can be worked out if you take a look at the actual position which A now has. Because of its original trade, A has to take delivery of the underlying asset by paying a price F0T. That's what the long position would require it to do. Simultaneously, A has to sell the underlying as part of this short position, but at a different price, that is FS0T. If A were to perform its obligations under both these trades, it will make a gain or loss, which can be given by this formula. And that can be written as, I pay first, take delivery of the underlying. Since I am paying F0T, I do it as minus NNC times F0T. I pay this amount. And then A goes and, you know, 
sells this underlying and receives this amount n and c times fs 0 t so here a is fulfilling its obligations on the long trade and here it's fulfilling its obligations on the short trade now combine the two terms and you get the gain slash loss of a by coupling these two trades together as n and c times the final settlement price at the end of day zero minus the trade price or the initial price of this trade again a rule of thumb quantity times final minus initial that's why i pointed it out to you at this point okay this was my gain or loss by lumping up the first two trades together what is left now this trade is still left okay this trade was not matched with anything the second trade of the package so what is my new position then my new position which i give to a as the position which it starts the next trading day with is a long position in n contracts you know this is the position i'm talking about n contracts long position with futures price as the settlement price on the previous day okay so this is my new position let me quickly summarize what i have done basically what i have done is a and b started off with this trade i have squared off their gains and losses on the first trading day transferred that amount let's say from one account to another that means let's say from a's account to b or b to a depending on who gained and who lost and then i bring a and b again to a fair footing at the beginning of the next trading day a and b begin the next trading day again on a very fair trade which is struck at fs 0 t this guy now carries no meaning okay it's gone now the relevance of this guy was only to give us the gain slash loss for this day okay so this procedure now keeps repeating next day that means on day one i'll do the same thing i'll calculate the gain and loss over this day and then give a and b new trades to begin day two with that means the gain or loss on the first day i mean day one will be in the quantity that times again it's written from a's perspective the final settlement price which is fs1 comma t minus the initial which is fs0 comma t and then i give a its new position which is n contracts long position struck at this settlement price and that's what we continue from one day to another okay a similar logic can be actually worked out for b also and what i say here is that gain slash loss of b is the quantity this time it's the reverse it's not final minus initial it's actually initial minus the final in terms of settlement prices it's previous minus the current day's settlement price and then b it begins every day with a new position which is on the same number of contracts the same kind of position which is short and which is struck at a futures price which is the previous day's settlement price okay now i know i have dealt with all this in terms of let's say variables but it will become very clear if i deal with a numerical example which i'm going to do now so let's take a numerical example and i'll do it from a's perspective so let's assume that a has entered into a long futures position in two contracts so this n is two the contract size is 100 so nc is 100 initial margin is 6000 per contract and if there are two contracts that means i'll begin my margin account with a balance of 12000 both a and b have to deposit this amount then the maintenance margin as i said it's 75 percent of the initial so that's 4500 taking into account two contracts it's 9000 let's assume that the initial traded price which is f 0 t in our nomenclature it started at 1450 and the trade ended at let's say let's call it some f star at 1434 i'm not even saying that this trade ended at delivery let's say it was closed out prior to delivery let's say a only maintained this trade for 10 days or 11 days and what i have done in this table now is that i have given to you the point or the day on which this trade started and the day on which it ended and we'll try and work out the daily gains and losses and the cumulative gain slash loss 
Now, one more one thing. In our previous treatment, I had begun my you know indexing of days as day zero, and here I've done it as day one. It doesn't matter. It's just choice of where to start. Okay. On the first day, I'm saying I begin my trade at a price one four five zero, and let's say at the end of that day. The settlement price which the exchange tells me is 1441. What has happened? The futures price between my trade time and the end of day settlement has gone down by $9. Since I am sitting on a position which is for two contracts each with 100 units each, $9 down for a long party means I, I make a loss. Okay, When price goes down, I make a loss. When price goes up, I make a gain. Price has gone down, my loss is minus 9 times this 200, that means an $1,800 loss. I started off with a margin account balance of 12,000, that means now my balance is 10,200. In this column, what I am maintaining is a cumulative gain or loss right from the day we started up until any given day. Let's move to the next day now. In moving to the next day, as I described to you, the original trade price now carries no meaning. I have already taken into account the gain slash loss on day one and in this day one it's A which who has lost, B who has gained. So I have transferred $1800 from A's account to B's account. And then the day two A and B will now start day two with this as their futures trade. It's like I have you know I have done away with my original trade and I have now instituted new trades which are at 1441. Next day what happens? The price goes down further. It goes down by 2.7. Again A has lost. So 2.7 times 2 times 100 means it's a loss of 540. Again I'll transfer 540 away from A's account into B's account and therefore the margin account now has a balance of 9660. This keeps happening well, next day came as a respite to A. Prices have gone up. It finally makes a gain and it's money which has come into A's account. Now, this thing keeps happening, as I said, till the point the balance in your margin account dips below the maintenance margin, which was 9,000. It happens on day 7. So, on day 7, my margin account has reached 7,980. The exchange will issue a margin call to A and A will be now required to top up the balance in the margin account to bring it back to 12,000. That means it has to deposit 4020 to bring it back to 12,000. Okay. Now again the same thing keeps continuing and finally on day 11 A closes out this trade let's say during the day when the price that was being traded was 1434. Based on the previous day's settlement that means A has made a gain on this day so on this final day, when A closes out its position, the price has changed which by a difference of 1434 minus 1428.1, which is a change of 5.9. Okay, So 5.9 times 200, I arrive at 1180. So 1180 will be transferred from B's account into A's account. Now let's do this. Let's uh, quickly take a look at what have we achieved. On a daily basis, these were the amounts which were transferred in and out of A's and B's accounts. If it's minus, A's account is deducted, B's account you know, is, is incremented by this amount and vice versa. This is the cumulative gain or loss. If you were to forget about individual day's movements, just take a look at the starting and the end. If you take a look at 1450 and 1434, over the span of this entire trade, the prices from A's perspective have gone down by 16. 16 times 200 means cumulatively A makes a loss of 3200. That's what we arrive at here. That's the cumulative gain or loss by adding all these entries in the daily gain or loss. Had this been a forward trade, this is the amount that I would have realized at the end of the trade. It would not have happened on a daily basis. That means B, who is the winning party in this trade, would have an exposure to A of the amount 3200. And if A had run away, B would have made a loss of 3200. And that's where the futures trade helped. Because in this trade, this 3200 was kind of already trickled into B's account 
because of this daily transfer from one account to another. That's, that's the thing which you have to keep in mind. Now, this was a very quick numerical example on margin accounting. Let's do one more very quick example. And this is, you've just bought a crude oil futures contract. That means it's a long position. And the size of this is n is equal to 1. The contract size is 1000. And the price at which this trade was done, F0T, let's say, is 27.33 per barrel. The initial and maintenance margins are respectively 3375 and 2500. We are asked to find out the price at which you will get a margin call. Let's say this is the price at the end of the day. We're talking about a span of a single day, for example. So let's call this price FS on day one of the trade. FST. So this is what we are asked to find. Let's write down the payoff of this party. The payoff of this party, because it's a long position, I can write it as FS1, T minus 27.33. Scale this up by 1 times 1000. This is my payoff. Okay. When will the margin call happen? It will happen when I have made a loss and my loss exceeds the difference between these two because only when the margin account balance dips below 2500 i'll get a margin call that means the difference between these two is 875 so if my loss let me write it down verbally if my loss exceeds 875 let's say less than equal to greater than equal to then i'll be instituted a margin call this is a gain not a loss let's invert it to make a loss so my loss can be written as 27.33 minus fs1 comma t this times 1000 only when this is greater than 875 i get a margin call let's just solve this inequality take this guy down there and you get 27.33 minus fs1 comma t is greater than or equal to 0.875 and then that means fs1 comma t take it on that side is less than or equal to 26.46 okay so only when the settlement price dips below 26.46 will i be instituted a margin call okay now let's quickly finish this learning statement with a look at some more information about margin accounts first Margin accounts are interest bearing. That means if you put money into a margin account, the exchange does pay you interest on that money, on, on that balance. Second, if your balance falls below a certain amount, you are asked to deposit more. If your balance is above initial margin, that means you have excess balance, you're also allowed to withdraw balance out or money out of the margin account. That's, is, that's also allowed. Next, eligibility. Now we said, the movement of this money from one account to another is in terms of cash. This can also be in terms of securities. Then what the exchange does is that it applies what is known as a haircut on these securities. Haircut means that if you are asked to, let's say, deposit securities for covering up a shortfall of $100 and on that security, if there's an, a haircut which is applied, just securities worth 100 would not do. You will have to deposit securities which are worth more than 100. That's, that's where the haircut comes in. Okay. Next and last, margins can be lower. The application of margins is not uniform across trades or participants. Margins can be lower if you are a party which is doing this futures trade as a bona fide hedger, which means you can prove to the exchange that you have an existing economic exposure which will be hedged by you doing this trade. You are a bona fide hedger and hence your margins are lower. If you are a speculator on the other hand and the exchange knows that you are doing this trade purely to make money, your margins tend to be higher. Next, if you do a day trade, which means whose lifespan is less than a day, that means it starts on the and ends on the same day, margins for that trade will be lower. Second, and actually last one, if you do a spread trade, which means it's a long trade coupled with a short trade, each of these trades, the long and the short, let's say, have a different delivery date, then that's called a spread trade and margins for that trade tend to be lower. Okay. 
So what we've done in this pretty long and detailed discussion is that we've taken a look at the meat of this chapter, very, very testable as far as the exam is concerned, and we've learned how to do margin accounting. Okay, So margin accounting, just to recap, is a way to actually trickle in the gains and losses between the accounts of the long party and the short party depending on who gains and who loses on a daily basis. It helps in reducing the credit risk involved in a futures transaction.